Um, so the, hopefully it's being recorded now. So first I would want to explain uh, the what is web development stack. You probably heard the term like a full stack developer quite a bit. So stack basically means the different things you need to actually uh, make an app work. So it includes, or well, have the picture there and the front end, and which is this part. So usually it refers to the part that runs in the browser or on the user's machine or mobile phone. And then also the backend. So the backend including something like a server, which will serve your data or serve your page. And then there will be the database. The database is where you store and the information, any records, for example, and all the information about the lessons or the orders, user or the bookings, user made, or even user the details, their names and their phone number. So these are usually and stored in the database. Uh, usually you the front end will talk to the server instead of talking to the database directly. And the server will decide what gets sent to and or retrieved from the database, or sometimes you can have the information directly served from the server. For example, um, for the web page that people you need to use, you might re retrieve or return from the server directly without having to go into the database. Okay, and um, so basically that's kind of general idea of stack. It's kind of like a three levels. You have the front end at the top level, the server in the middle and the database at the very end. And you can have different softwares for these, and these are called the different stacks. So you probably in the second year module, if you're done, you have seen something and the stack based on the PHP and Apache server. There's quite a few variations of this. And so the X can be some different things, but the A in this stack stands for the Apache, which is the server. So that means this middle part and the MySQL will be the database which is the this part and finally the PHP is a language that you use to write these things connect these things together and then you have say the LAMP XAMPP ZAMP MAMP and WAMP different just to say change of one of the components okay and uh, so one of the and disadvantages of all these different stacks is they use multiple languages. So for the front end, you will use PHP. In the server, if you're using the Apache, you're gonna use in C. And then for the database part, if you do any query, you're using SQL and anything related to that. So that's not the most convenient. Essentially means you have to learn different languages. Obviously for the front end, you also need to learn HTML JavaScript and CSS to do the front end. Okay. And uh, the, like uh, recently, the more popular stack is stands, is using the M, E, something in the middle and N. So here the M stands for MongoDB, the E stands for Express, and the X usually refers to the front end framework that you use, for example, Vue, React, or even Angular. And the N stands for the Node.js, which is the server. So this is kind of the stack that we will cover in this module. So we're gonna use MongoDB Express nodes plus in our modules that X will be the view. So you can have mean, M-E-A-N. So A stands for regular or MERN. So the R stands for React or Maven. We were the you have the view stands for Vue.js, okay? So all these different kind of stack all use the same database. This is so-called the middleware and the server. The only difference is in terms of the front-end framework that you use. Okay, and if you look at the same uh, diagram, so in the front-end, you can choose either Angular, React, or Vue.js, or some other frameworks. And in the middle, they're all using the Node.js, which is the server, and Express is what I call the middleware here. And finally, you have MongoDB, which is database. So compared to all those PHP, Apache, and MySQL-based stack, 
uh, one of the difference or advantages is all these are JavaScript based. So Angular Reactive View is JavaScript based. That's why, because they are JavaScript frameworks. Node.js is a server written in JavaScript, and Express.js is one of again it's like a JavaScript library, so it's also JS. And uh, MongoDB and it stores and saves data in JSON format again, which is native to JavaScript. So that's one of the difference of this MEXN stack is JavaScript is a common language, so you don't need to use to learn multiple languages to get it to work. Okay, and uh, so in the next few lectures, we're going to focus on this particular stack and Maven. So it's MongoDB, Express, Vue, and Node.js. So we're going to focus the Vue.js is for the front end part. We're going, only going to mention briefly in terms of how do you retrieve data from the back end. Otherwise, we will not cover any more in terms of the Vue itself. And we're going to spend most of the time on the MongoDB, Express, and Node part. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as I said, we already covered the Vue.js. We're not going to cover much more here. We will start with the Node.js, which is a server, and then move on to the next part will be the Express, which is a middleware, which is runs on the server and build on top of Node, actually. And finally, we're going to cover MongoDB. Uh, and uh, so the MongoDB, as you remember, in the diagram is the one on the right hand side. So I assume it's already covered in the second year module. So we what we will not cover is say how to use MongoDB, say how to install it, how to create a collection, or how do you come up, use a command to add or drop uh, records, what they called, I forgot now. And so JSON object into collection, those we will not cover. Instead, we are going to focus on uh, how to say connect to the MongoDB through Express so you can retrieve and send data to it. That's the part we're going to focus on. Okay, uh, also we're going to cover how do you host these services online. So for the first part, we showed you we can use GitHub pages, then you can host your view app, the front end on a server. So everyone else can access it. But say using GitHub pages, you cannot host your node or express code, and you cannot host your MongoDB database either online. So instead we're gonna using a free service and called Heroku, which allows you to host your node or express this code. And then using Atlas, which is kind of hosted MongoDB online. So in this way, you're going to have all the components hosted online that you can run. So everyone, sorry, a user can use your app without having uh, actually and remotely. Otherwise, for example, if you have your node or MongoDB running locally on your laptop, then no one else can use it unless and only you will be able to access your app. Okay, now, as we said, we're going to start from the node and then move on to the Express and the MongoDB later. Okay. And so what is Node? Okay, so Node.js, and most commonly people just call it Node, which is what I will do as well, uh, is a JavaScript platform, a way to run JavaScript. So basically that allows you to run JavaScript code. Okay. And uh, so as we have covered this so far, and JavaScript is always run inside the web browser, and doesn't matter if it's Firefox or Chrome or Safari or some other browsers, it usually is always run in the browser, but it doesn't have to be that way. You can run it without the browser. And so this is exactly what Node.js does. So it allows JavaScript to run from the command line without a browser. Okay. And so because of this, and this is making it possible to become a server, which you can serve web apps. So essentially, uh, previously, if the 
JavaScript is always run in the browser. That means it has to always be on user's uh, computer. So that will be always serving the front end. And now, because you can run Node from a command line, that means you can run it on a server, in a sense here, a physical machine without displays. And then you can use that to serve web pages or apps. OK. and. Uh, Okay, so running JavaScript code with Node is very similar when you, how you run other programming languages. And the example here is a Python file. Let's say you created the Python file, it's named for myfile.python. The way you would run it, besides, for example, using some IDs, you can just in the command line type in Python and follow your Python name, uh, Python file name, and it will run. Okay, I think for some of you may be more familiar with uh, Java, then if you have a Java file called my file Java, then you can run it from command line instead of using say Eclipse or NetBeans, you just type in Java followed by your file name and it will run from command line. So <clears throat> it's the same for Node.js. So let's say you write a code in a JS file called myAppServer.js. Then to run that code with Node.js, you just need to type in node space uh, my, my app server.js. Again, in command line. Okay. And then you can make uh, the my app server.js uh, behave like a web server. Then it can handle the incoming calls and the serve the pages or return the data people request. Yeah. So uh, once it's running, so we're going to see examples later on. And actually Node.js has some building functions allows you to create a server very easily just with a few lines of code. Okay, and before we show you actually how to do that and just a little bit um, information, for example, why we use Node.js as a server. So as I mentioned, um, it's used the same language, JavaScript and front end. So it's easier for the front end developer. So they don't need to learn a new language. And it is actually quite fast and may not be the fastest server ever, but it do run relatively fast. And so Node is based on the JavaScript engines used in Google Chrome. So that's one of the faster JavaScript engines. <clears throat> and uh, so the Node.js basically take the JavaScript engine out from Google Chrome, which is an open source project, and make, made it to run on the command line. So every time when the, game, uh, the JavaScript engine in Google Chrome updates, and uh, Node.js gets an update as well. Okay, the, the other things make Node.js faster is it can handle concurrency a little bit better. Okay, so this is something I'll try to explain what the concurrency is. Um, so first is, if you run the code always in a linear fashion, that means only one after another, this is what might look like. So you have three tasks and task one and two and three, and they will always be run in the sequential order. So always task one first, and then task two, and then task three. And for example, in each of the codes, you might have some part, which is this gray one, which is not running any code locally, but waiting for data. For example, when you first start your code, it might need to uh, log in, which requires to retrieve data from the server to confirm. And that user is has a credential to access, or maybe just say to load the home page, first page of your app. And that will take a little bit of time. So basically, this gray part is where the front end is not doing anything, just sitting there waiting for the data. And once the data come back, and you can finish the task with the data. 
And similarly, in task two, you run some code locally, and you have to wait. This, for example, for more data, maybe this time we'll be able to use a login confirmation and do something. And similar for task three. So in Node.js, it's able to do some of these execution in parallel. So if you still look at the same task, and when you do run the first task, and when you finish the first part, which run locally, when you start to wait, no, just no, okay, I'm now start waiting, I'm not doing anything, then it will start the execution of task two. Okay. And then this is where the task two starts when it's still waiting. And then here, the task two actually finished the first part and start to waiting itself as well. Okay. And then basically during the execution of the first task, uh, you run, you complete the part of the second task already. And then by here, you completely finish the uh, first task and you continue on with the remaining of the second task, assuming this part is waiting is already over. Also, if this waiting is even longer, then task three can even start if there's a gap between here, between you finish the waiting and starting the task two, there's another gap. And uh, then the task is straight can even start a bit early. And again, the second part of the task two can be run when task three is waiting. Basically, there's nothing is wrong there. And finally, finish. So if you compare, let's say this is how long the third task will run. Uh, if one have to be wait before the previous one to finish, before it can start. And this is when you can allow them to start in parallel if the process is waiting. So you can see if you allow some parallel and execution, you can see the total times, if you start the same time or finish here, which will be a bit faster than this one. So when you have lots of tasks or you have lots of waiting in between and allow to do this in parallel, will make it overall time much shorter. Okay, and uh, as we said, and this is not a true run task in parallel. So you can see at one time, there's only one task is being executed. So this could be the first task. You can only start the second task if the first task is not doing anything. So if you have a truly paralyzed, paralyzed execution, you can actually run, run all the tasks in parallel. So this will be when task one starts, and task two can also start at the same time, and same as task three, that will be even faster. Okay, but this is uh, not something JavaScript can do. JavaScript cannot do truly parallel execution by design. So this is probably the best you can achieve uh, with JavaScript. <clears throat> Okay, uh, next we're gonna just show you how to install Node.js. And so you might already have that installed. And to check whether you have that installed or not, you need to open the command window, which I'll do now. Uh, and then you just need to type in uh, the command. As we always said, and the node is a command which you type to run Node.js code. And in this time, we don't want to run any particular code. That's why we're followed by the file name after. We just type in dash, so hyphen V. You just check the version of the node installation. And if you don't have it installed, you should have something like this. And if you install, it will tell you the version of the node you have installed. So in my case, I would install. So if I type node-v, it shows the version I'm installed is 14.10.1. <coughs> Sorry, uh, what uh, is, it, is it important that we have the most up-to-date node or not really? Um, you can, and um, for, for what we need in this module, you don't have need to use the latest version of Node, just a recent one would work. Okay, because I've, I've got 12.18.2. Yeah, that's probably- so that's sort of like last year, I think. All right, yeah. okay. Okay, and uh, 
if you get something like say node command not fun that means not installed then you first have to install it again so it's quite easy and uh, you can go to the node website and this will tell you and the versions that can be available to you is actually would automatically detect the operating system and providing these versions and so if I go to, and if I just type in node.js, yeah, it will point me to the node.js website. And we have these two options. Okay, it's detecting, I'm using a Mac, so it's going to be Mac OS versions. Okay, and then you have two options. And obviously this is even later one, it says 15.3, that's even later than the one I installed. Okay, and this is called long-term support version and so that means it's usually for the companies they want they, they don't want to always keep the latest version they don't really like changes then will be recommend for this and this will be the latest latest version so we have all the latest things here as i mentioned and for this module you can use either of those because we're only using the basic features and these are all, there's no difference which versions you choose or even the older ones. And so the one I get on my screenshot is from last year. At that time, um, the long-term support version is 12, the latest 13, so either of those would work here as well. Okay, and so that's the web page. And I explained and uh, either of the versions should be okay. Okay. And when you install this, and it's just a file, and you double click, it will start install. And um, it's the same on the Mac or on the Windows. And there's also something called MPN, which is shorter for Node Package Manager. That's actually something we're going to use a lot as well. We're going to cover that later on. But um, you don't need to do anything else specifically to get MPN. It's already included once you install Node. And so that's an important tool to manage dependencies. We're going to cover that more, more on that a little bit later. Okay. And because it can actually install the packages, which is not specifically designed for Node.js, and later on, for example, the Express we want, or even the native script library. Uh, later, we need to build the mobile versions, mobile app versions of, the, of our app. Okay, and uh, if you are using a Mac, you have a bit more options than just download uh, from, and say the file from a DMG file from the node.js website. So you can use something called Homebrew, and which is like a package manager. So it's, it's something in a sense similar to the MPN we mentioned here, but uh, MPN works on both Windows and Linux and Mac but it's only for everything that is JavaScript packages. And whereas Homebrew can be anything, and it doesn't have to be JavaScript, can actually Homebrew itself is written in Ruby. And if you running Mac, it's actually recommended to install using Homebrew and because it helps you to manage the versions and dependencies a bit better than the default Mac OS itself. And so what you want to do is first do to do brew update. And what it does is update the versions of brew itself and also the information about to say different versions of packages you can install. And you do brew install node. So this will install node.js onto your computer. Okay. And uh, if you already have node and you can also use brew to upgrade and or just type in brew and upgrade and then node. I think that brew just runs the program itself, upgrade the pro command to just upgrade something and it tells the particular package you want to upgrade is called node. So that's fairly uh, easy to understand. Okay, and uh, finally, um, if you don't have brew on your computer, you need to either go to the brew website, which is brew.sh, or you just copy and paste this line of code in your command line. So, and just to check whether you have brew or not, and it's the same if you're typing brew and type dash V, 
it should tell me the versions. Okay, and it's something okay, I already have installed and this 2.5.0, that's the version that we installed. And then if you don't have and do not have this information and you just do the same thing, either go to the brew website, which looks like this, and they actually just give you the same command to install, or you can open the command line and just copy paste this directly. Okay, and uh, once you installed, and next thing just to check to make sure it's working, and the way we check is the same as we checked it before, and just type in these, and in the command line windows. So you can type in node-v, which shows you the version of the node installed, and you can also type in npm, npm, and dash v, as we mentioned, this is a node package manager, so it should be included in the node. So if that's installed, that probably means your node is also installed. And again, so this hyphen V or dash V shows the version, you can see. And when I do the demo, the node is 12 and MPN version. So these two versions are usually different and they're not the same. So if I do it now, I do npm hyphen v and it will tell me, okay, my npm version is 6.14.8. Again, for most, for this module and any recent version of npm will be sufficient. Okay, now that's it. Now you have node and npm installed and we're gonna have a quicker look, a closer look of how to run or how to use it. Okay, and so Node actually have a command line environment or the read evaluate print lib. Okay, so that means something, it will try to run whatever you typed in immediately. So if you want to run the command line environment for Node, you just need to type in Node with, without, with, without anything in your command line and you would see something like this. Okay, and uh, that's all I'm going to do now. I'm going to clear up the things I already have. If I just type in node, enter, and you can see some interface like this now. And you have a, it now, everything you typed in, it will try to interpret as a command for node. Rather than say, if you're typing ls, there will be no longer recognized the default command that you use in the command line environment. Okay, so. Then we can do the standard uh, JavaScript things because Node is JavaScript. So anything JavaScript you can do. So I can do one plus one. Ah, uh, maybe I can say one equal to one, and it will return true. Or I can type one plus one should return two. Uh, I can join two. Huh? And hello world. So I can join two strings together and they give you the results. You can do more complex and calculations and it will tell you the answer straight away. Okay, and uh, you can even run the function. Uh, for example, I can define the variable a equal to two and then I define the function Takes a variable as argument, return x times two. Okay. We define the function. It doesn't really do anything yet, but now if you say f a, it will run this function and use the value you defined in a. It give you four. You can say f. Uh, let's say 28, again, it will run the function, okay? So this is just fairly standard uh, JavaScript, everything you can do. And if you define the function or variable, it will also remember as well. Okay, and th there are some differences between 
what you can do in the browser. And because, for example, this between the browser and between the nodes, because now there's no node. So for example, you cannot do um, things like a document dot get element uh, by ID because there's no such things as a browser or DOM and you can't do document or there's no element exists. Uh, let's say just call the ID. All these things you'll get. So because it doesn't understand what document is because there's no such things as a browser. So these things are different, okay. And there's also something new um, in Node.js as well. So for example, in Node.js, you can load packages. Uh, when Node was first developed, JavaScript does not support package. So Node come up with its own ways to create packages and manage them. So NPM is a tool, but also if you need to use certain package, you need to require it first in Node. So that's something new in Node, which does not exist in Chrome. So anything in run in a browser, it does not support require. Okay, and next we're gonna run our, actually the first Node script, Node script. So in the sense, we're not going to do this in this interactive commander environment. Let me just um, exit this now. So to exit, just press Control C, and you can uh, sorry, do it twice. Now I exit it now. Clear this. So the, what we're going to trying to do is actually we're going to create a file and then run it with Node. Okay. As we already mentioned before, you need to create a script file and then we run it, just type node space followed by the name of your script file. Okay. So, I mean, this depends. You might call something different, called maybe called app.js, server.js, different names, doesn't matter. So we're gonna just create a simple file called hello world.js and it only has one line of code console.log, hello world. So you're probably all familiar with console.log, which outputs something to the console. So here I say, uh, in Node, you can't use something like alert because there's no such thing as a browser window. There's no pop-up message either. <clears throat> but the console does exist. And because it's running from command line, so this is probably the something I'm gonna use a lot. So this is all the only that it's saying, it just says hello world. That's all it does. Okay, uh, once we created it, and all you need to do is just type in node hello world. And you have to make sure you run this in the same folder where hello world is in the command line window. Then you will see something like this here. So when you type, this is the command line typing, and this will be the display. And depends on what you put in here, you might get display a slightly different message. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this now. Uh, I'm going to do this in the command line. So let me see. Okay. Uh, let me go to the Um, and, uh, let me find the right folder to do this. Uh, EST. Uh, we are in week nine now. Uh, why is so wide. Okay. I'm just trying to looking for the files. Okay, it doesn't have one. Let's do one. 
So I'm gonna create a directory, demo. I go inside demo now, okay. And I have nothing. I'm gonna create a file, or I'm gonna call it hello.js instead of hello world. Uh, okay, uh, so you can create this in Visual Studio Code, it doesn't matter, or use some other tools. Here, I'm just using a text line, a command line based text editor, just called Nano, which is available, I think, on Windows as well. As we said, all we're going to do is just display uh, one line code. So maybe I'm typing something slightly different. I'll do console.log. I'll just say, and welcome to the second part of CST3145. Yeah. And then I can uh, save. So in the nano, you need to type control O. Where is that? Ah, it says the right out. That's what we need to do. So I type control O. And we'll confirm the file name. Oh, yeah, I want hello.js. And to exit is control X. Okay, and if I listen to my files again, uh, let me, uh, okay, you can see I have a file here now. And then to run it, as I mentioned, you just type node followed by file name, and you should see a message. So it says, Welcome to the second part of. It really just depends on what you're typing. You can change and ask it to do, develop, uh, to display different messages or do more complex things. Okay, so that's the demonstration. Let me see how are we doing in terms of timing. Okay, uh, we are just halfway, so it's good. Okay, Kai. Yeah. To to you know how you just uh, you run the file. Yeah. Do you have to be in Node to run the file through the command prompt? Mm, no, you don't. No. So you, you mean you don't need to be in this mode? Yeah. In this mode, you actually can't do that. You can't do a node hello.js. It's going to give you errors. Yeah. Okay. So it's just normal command line. Uh, so not uh, within. Do you have to be within the folder that the file saved? Or exactly. Just... So you have to be in the same folder as the file is. For example, if I do, this is the equivalent of DIR on Windows. It lists all the files yeah. uh, that exist. It tells you, okay, that's here. And if I go one level up, and then if I still do um, hello.js, and it tells you, okay, it cannot find um, this file. And then, for example, what I could do is I can say, PWNC, I can say node, demo slash hello.js then here I just adding the actual path oops uh, where you can find it's in the demo directory and then it will be able to find the file and do this because I just did that and um, it's not really working uh, okay and I don't think we'll have time to. Yeah, yeah no worries, no worries. Lecture. No worries. I'll yeah, email you later. Do it afterwards. I'll figure out. Yeah. But just to make sure the first, to, just to make sure the file name is correct. So it's exactly the name you typed in and check node is running. And because there's a small chance when you install node, it's not added to the system path. So you actually have to tell the system where you can find this node.exe or the equivalent on Mac, but usually that should be automatically available, recognized. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about modules. So that's something new in the, or something new introduced by Node when it was first created. Actually, the latest JavaScript standard actually supports module natively. So actually there's lots of work actually ongoing to convert node modules into standard JavaScript modules. But for this um, module, okay, this is a different module, this class or lesson, we're gonna still use the modules created by node, which is how most of these uh, node modules currently available. And so the 
coming or the, the concept of modules is similar to something like a library which allows you to include more code from other files so for example in java you can import files or in python you can do the similar things as well okay you can import a second file which is a inside existing file let's say it's called b and the advantages is so then you don't have to put all the code inside one file which will make it very difficult a very large and difficult to read okay as i mentioned until very recently and javascript itself and does not support this because when javascript when it was first designed and designed this is like a 20, more than 20 years ago they just not imagine this will be so complex it will need to import external files okay and so actually you can import other javascript files just using the script tag which is very similar as what we're doing for the view say at the view files you use a script or line of script and which imports uh, files online so you can start using view command but that's different from the modules okay and so to solve this problem so node introduce its own module system called the common common js and then you can use that you can say require building modules here the require is a specific command it introduced and the building modules means these are the modules which comes with node once you install they are there and you can start using them including the http server we we'll see a little bit later and you can also require third-party modules so these are the modules not created by node and but can be created by anybody it can be created by you you can create your own modules and if you want to use that in your javascript code and you just need to require them yeah as i said you can also make your own modules and require them and then for and this module like, ah maybe i should okay it's unfortunate for for this class we're going to use mostly just using the building modules from node which is sufficient okay actually node come with actually quite a few building modules and for example uh, the one to access files so this is okay you need to remember so this will be the files where the node code is running because node is mostly running on the server so this will be allow you to access the files on the server and the ones which you actually have access to and there's utility functions and just called util just for short instead of just called utility so the fs is a shorter for file system so it starts with the first letter of f and the first letter of system okay and then also it has a module called url building and which allows you to pass the strings you receive and so the url will be say http 3 wgooglecom slash question mark uh, search equal to uh, web development for example and th this module allows you to pass the url So for example, it can extract uh, the domain or the pass or the actual file. And uh, we might use that a bit later and not today, but later on we'll actually start to build more complex HTTP server. Okay, and uh, so let's see an example. Excuse me. So this line of code and requires a module that you want to use. So you say require URL. So that's the command and that's the name of the module. Okay. And if you want to use a different module, then just put a different name here. So for the building module, which is the ones I'm using here. And you don't need to specify where you can find these modules. And otherwise, you have to tell it well, the actual URL, for example. Yeah. So, in a sense, this require here is maybe similar to an import or include in other languages. 
I think import is used in Java. You can import something. If libraries including is in C. Okay. And so the require require this string, which has to be the name of the package. And what it returns is a package itself. So when you run this, it will return the package, which is the module itself. And it's a common convention just to give the variable, which will kind of refer to the return, the same name as the module name. So if you require a URL module, usually this will be referred to a variable whose name is also called URL. So usually these two are the same. It's a convention. Okay. And we can actually also uh, test this. We can write these code and then you can run just by run node URL test, whatever the name you did there. So before we do that, uh, we can have a quick look, say once you import or require the module and you use its function, so this URL refers to this URL here. This is the building function, which allows you to pass the query string or the URL string. In this case, it's called this. And then once you've done the parsing, the results, parsing results is stored in this variable now called the parse URL. You can say parse the URL dot protocol and it will tell you which protocol it used in this URL. In this case will be HTTP, sometimes maybe HTTPS or even FTP. And then it will tell you the host. Host will be the domain name, which is example.com. And finally, the actual query. So the query will be the things after the question mark will be the query. So the query will be name equal to Barry. Okay, uh, I'm gonna just do this quickly to see. Yeah, we have a little bit of time. And so let's we go back to our demo folder. So, so far we only have one file and let's create another file. And just with, so I'm gonna still use my nano. I'm gonna call this one URL. Maybe just call URL, maybe not. Okay, variable URL equal to require. So this is a line of code which requires the building package called the URL and then refer to that package using a variable has the same name for the URL, that's fine. And then we're gonna use the building message to pass the URL. Uh, the actual, okay, variable name you can choose. Here I'm just bit, being a bit lazy, just call PURL. And then using URL dot pass. So this URL here, and has to be the same as this here, so it refers to. And again, this pass is a building function. You have to use the same. Okay, I'm gonna pass now. I'm gonna give it a string to actually pass. I'm gonna just copy the same thing here. That will be string, and you can use any other string, even if it's not a proper URL. It will still try to pass, but it might not give you good results. And you can send out the result. And in this case, we're gonna use in console log just to display the results. But in the actual case, you might use information to do something else. So I'm gonna do protocol. And uh, I'm gonna do its host. And finally, I'm gonna do console.log. Dot query. Okay, and now I save it, control O, and then the exit. Ooh. Ah, it was not here. Okay, and if I now list the file again, I have a second file called uiltest.js, and if I want to run this, 
I just type node URL test.js. Okay, and you can see, and that is the protocol, that is the domain or the host, and finally, that is the query. Yeah, I think maybe nano. Uh, maybe I would do the, let me do this. Oh, I can't do it. Okay. Okay. And I'll just leave it at that. And so you can see, and here the require now it's working, even this, because we run it with node, it requires, it recognize the require command. And then we load the building module and the user module to do something. Okay, as we mentioned before, and when you require module, it's very common. You put that in a variable which has the same name. So here, and we require URL. And usually, you will just give the variable name called the URL instead of say the URL module, something like this. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can give it different names. For example, you can give it much longer or different names. That's completely up to you. Okay, and now we're gonna intro discussing something It's very important and it's the MPN. We mentioned a little bit earlier on saying this is actually used to manage the packages. And because in most of the cases, you only the built-in modules from that comes with Node is not enough to do what you need. So you need to inst and require other things. And this is where the MPN come, come in. And MPN use a file called package.json to record the information of the external modules you installed. Okay. As I already said, uh, Node has several building modules but in most cases that's not enough okay and you often need third-party packages and to make your application work for example later on we have to require the express or the modules needed to connect to mongodb so these are only these are all not building node modules okay and so say all the information related to the modules actually related to your project is all in this file called the package.json file. And as the name mentioned, so this is a JSON file. So it follows the same standard of the JSON format. So you start with curly bracket and you have key value pairs. So you need a comma and you need a column between the key and value and the comma at the end for each key value pair, et cetera, et cetera. And then for the package.json, and you can use that to define the name of the project and its versions, its authors. These other meta information about the project, you can also store it in the same file here, package.json. And also it's more importantly, it defines dependency. That means a third party modules they will need to run your Node.js code. So these are the third party ones. So not building ones like the URL we just seen. For that, you don't need to list in the package.json. These are only the third party ones created by some, someone other than Node. Okay, and uh, so as I said, so this is the example package.json file. And as I said, it's just a normal JSON object. You have start with and end with curly bracket. We have the key and value pair. And some of these keys have specific meanings that Node will recognize. For example, the name, it will Node will understand this is the project name. It's not say your name, the author's name, for example. An actual name, you can define whatever you want. And then the author and the nodes, this is the author of the project. And whether this project is private or not. So a non-private, uh, node projects will be can be registered on the so basically will make the 
available to other people they want to use. And so this is where how the people publish their own third party modules. And, but for our purpose, in most cases, you don't really want to publish your module. So private will be true. And you can set the versions for your module. And again, this number is completely up to you. You can follow different ver and conventions, but usually this will be the main version. This is, will be the minor version. And this is the version for the bug fix, usually than errors. Okay. And finally, this is a dependency part, which lists everything, all the third party modules that you need to run your code. And currently it's empty, that means nothing is needed. Okay, so, uh, so Node can actually automatically add dependency here as you install new modules. So you don't have to manually type in uh, the different modules you need to edit by editing this file. Okay, and I already mentioned the MPN stands for the Node Package Manager and it comes with Node. So when you install Node, you install an MPN. And uh, we late previously, we tried MPN dash hyphen. Oh, let me exit this. It's still here. So we, we did um, MPN hyphen V just to make to show you. Say we have MPN installed. Okay. Actually, now the um, node and then NPM that becomes part of the GitHub now, and in a sense. The company that owns GitHub owns NPM. Doesn't mean you can run NPM on GitHub. Okay, so let's say we want to use a module called Mustache. And then after that, you can use double curly bracket syntax similar to the. So, for example, we can do something like this. And you want to render double curly bracket first, double curly bracket, and then double curly bracket last, double curly bracket last. Okay, and then here the first and last almost like a variable, and you can find the name there. Okay, so obviously if you just write this directly into a JS file and the run with node, it will not work because the node does not recognize how to do, how to process these double curly bracket and how to then use link that say the first with these values. So you have to install a package to do that first. And that particular package is just called mustache. I think partly because the shape of this looks like a mustache. Okay, and so what you need to do is you need to run something called MPN install, so that allows to add new modules, and then mustache. Mustache is the name of the module you want to install. And finally, double hyphen save. That means you want to save that information into the dependency of your file. So into the dependency of your package.json file. Okay. Uh, Okay, and uh, okay, so this file or this must be done in the root of the node project folder. And after you run this, you will have a new directory called node modules. And that will actually where the mustache packages will be downloaded and installed. Okay, and this is already mentioned the save flag would add this information, the mustache to the dependency of your file. Okay, um, let's do this quickly. Uh, so let's say this is my directory. Now this time I'm gonna just manually create package.json file. Um, my, the name, so the name will be the name 
of the project. Let's just call it uh, node node demo. Okay. Ah, sorry. Um, just as before, this has to be a JSON object. So have to do a curly bracket, otherwise it would not work. Uh, let's call it also it's me and maybe have a version called 0 0.1. That's my first version. Okay. Uh, so maybe just be nice. I'm going to just, oh, I missed a quote there. Dependencies, dependencies. Okay. Uh, okay, and if I just show all the files now, now I have this package.json file installed. And uh, if you list, you can see these are the current information. Now, if I want to install a new one, I need to type in this one, npm install mustache with the save. Okay, so first I'm going to just try without npm install mustache and then save. Ah, okay. So, okay, so it's telling me there's some errors. If you look at it, it says, and failed to pass JSON file, unexpected token, single quote, in JSON at position two while passing this one. Okay, so I used single quote uh, in the package.json, but it obviously it doesn't like it. So that means I need to uh, change every single code to double quote. Single to double. Uh, almost there. And dependency. Okay, hopefully that will be. So I'm gonna save the file now and let's try again. We run the same node, uh, install, uh, mustache, and then save. Okay, yeah, and so this is what you'll see. And it's actually downloaded some files and it did it very quickly, so you don't even really see. And, but you can see here, it says plus, Mustache, and the current place that's the version. And it says you added one packages from one contributor, etc., and found zero. Okay, and it says there's a new version for the NPM, which I haven't been updated. But the first thing uh, you can see now is if I list, you can see now I have a thing called node module. This is actually a directory. And if you ins go there, you can see it has another directory called the mustache, which is actually where all the files related to this particularly node module is saved. And also, if you now look at the package um, JSON or package .json, you can see now this line is added now. So it says mustache is one of the dependency for my project and that's the version i got installed currently so the version number is also useful and because later when people try to rerun your code if they use different version it might not work so it's good to know which version the code was created with okay um yeah 
So if we didn't use the save flag, uh, didn't use where well, was the line of code? This one when you typed in, and then this will not be automatically add to your package.json file. So you have, if you want to, you have to do this manually. Usually, if it's something you want to keep for your module, you probably would use a save tag. Okay, and uh, later on, someone, if they want to rerun your code and install all the required dependencies, and they just need to do npm install and without any arguments. So what it does, it will just go through the list of dependencies in your module and then install everything it doesn't have yet. So if I have my stash listed here, and I didn't have my stash on my system, and to install this, and if you have 10 modules listed here, all 10 will be installed. And so this is also related to, and when you submit your coursework, and uh, you should not submit your uh, node modules folder, because that folder can get really large, so all you need to do is submit package.json file, and then I can just type in uh, npm install and what, download all the packages needed. Here, it shouldn't install every, anything. Yeah. So here it just says audit one packages and from zero outlaw. If there's anything I'm missing, uh, then it will install the um, packages. Yeah, uh, so again, this is something I already mentioned. If you download something, if you say clone a code from GitHub repository, it's a node project, it will have package.json file, but it will not have the node mod module folder because that can get really large, actually very big, can easily get into say gigabyte size. Okay. <clears throat> And the reason is, uh, so some of these modules, they can have their own dependencies. For example, I want the mustache. Uh, mustache is depends on two other modules. And these two other modules can have their own dependencies and go on. So when you only want to install one module, but you might actually download up five or more uh, different modules. Okay, and then once you, in our examples, once we now install the mustache mo module, then we can require it in our code, and then we can run these, and it will be able now be able to recognize these curly bracket. Um, let's see. Okay, and so because and um, we are kind of running a little bit short down time, so I'm not going to do the live demo now, or uh, maybe I can just do this quickly. Um, and you can just run, you should see an high Nicholas Cage at the end. And because when you do the console log, it will log the results, which is this, which will replace first with Nicholas and last with Cage. Okay, oh. Mustache, and I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm gonna just copy and paste. Yes. Hmm? Okay. Uh, Okay, so you can see now we have the mustache files here. Then I can just do node mustache. And okay, it's running fine now. So now it can recognize. Um,
Okay, and uh, so you can also install a menu, sorry, module manually. And for example, you can just add it to the package JSON and then do npm install afterwards. You can also even specify the versions of dependency. Okay, and so all the available third-party modules is online. If you go, this is the website for it. And you can specify, you can search for the lots of different ones. There are literally thousands or even millions of different packages. And, and you can search and then install them manually. But usually the easiest way is just to run npm install, what we did here, followed by your module name. Probably not gonna, ah, okay, so. Yeah, so actually there is a module, it's just called module name, and it has been now downloaded and added to my um, package. So if I now do uh, node, you can see now there's a new one called uh, module name, but here, if now you see the package.json file, you can see uh, module name package or name and is oh, it's already added as well, even without the save. That's interesting. Mm. That's already added as well, even without the save. Maybe there's some changes in the later, later versions. Okay, um, also you can generate the package JSON automatically. And what we've done so far is we use a text editor to create the file and save it as package JSON. But you can also do this uh, automatically. So what you need to do is to use this called npn init initialization command in the root directory. Then it will ask you some names for your project and you just need to type in so this is usually many of how the other kind of tools work now. And when you finish answer all the questions, it will create a new file called the package.json for you. Okay, uh, there's nothing different compared to the one you create manually in the text editor, it's still the same. You just say, it done this for you, save you a little bit of effort. And you can still change it just as you would do and with a in a text editor, adding new packages dependencies, for example. And so maybe you're gonna do that now. So these are the ones. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete and also gonna delete package lock.json. And if I list my files now, you can see I only I don't have the package JSON anymore. So if I want, I can do npm int. Uh, make it clear. You can do npm int, and they can start asking you some questions. Okay, so first it will ask you a package name. Uh, so it's already guessed as demo because that's my folder name. Okay, I just call it demo and choose a version. 1.1 is a default one. I can just use the. You can type in some descriptions or you can just leave it. That's also fine. Entry point. Uh, it's already recognized the JavaScript file. That means the main file to run to start your project. So hello, test commands, git repository. If you don't want, you can just click, uh, press enter to skip those. Okay, and then this will be the files. It's created for you. Actually, you can see it's already recognized. These two modules are installed and automatically added into the dependency. Uh, and also set the main file, which would, okay. And if you click, is it okay? I say yes. Now, if I look, I have the package.json file created for me now, it actually have quite a bit more information than I manually typed. 
I'll just display the information in package.json. And we can see these as information automatically created for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Now we're going to do the last part of this lecture is actually to create a simple server. Uh, we're going to using the building HTTP module that comes with Node. Okay, and uh, so because Node is commonly used for as a server, so that's why we have this building module comes with it. And we're going to really just use a function just called create server. That's literally just create a HTTP server. OK, so let's have a look at the code before we type it in. So first, you need to require the module. The module name is called HTTP. Then we store that in a variable, has the same name as the, the module. So it's also called HTTP. Okay. So this is a function that we defined to handle the incoming request. Okay, we call this one request handler, and this actual name it doesn't really matter. But this will be our function to handle any coming request. And you have this request and response object that always comes with any or needed for any request handler. So the request will contain the information sent in to the URL, and the response will be the response you send back. So by default, it will be empty. And so in this case, you're not really doing anything. What you do is when you have a request, you say console.log, and you display some text and actual the URL in the request. You, you send basically, this is console log the log into the command line on your server. So the client, people sending the request will not see it. And in our case, we're running the server and the client in the same computer. So we're gonna see, but we'll see this message where we run the node code. And then the response will send some, a single text string is hello world. In this case, doesn't really matter what URL you send, it always get the same response. Okay. Finally, you start the server by using the create server methods come with the module package, so the HTTP module. And uh, you need to give it a request handler function, which is this one we define here. So basically, this will be our request function. You have to put it here. And then finally, you say server.listen3000. So this is the part actually starting the server. Here you created the server function, it stores this in a variable. Now it actually runs and you will listen to request on 3000. So basically you have to type in the port to get it to work. Yeah. So we're gonna do that now. Mm. Okay, uh, let's say we're going to create a file called uh, my server yes. and we need to first require the http library okay, i'm going to use double quote now just in case and then we have a function for the request handler an actual function name, it doesn't have to be. Okay, let's just call it IH for short, request handler. Save me typing a bit. And it will have the request object and the response object. Again, the exact name doesn't matter, you can change. Okay, um, incoming request from. And here again, the actual message is not critical. So I'm just saying incoming request from request. So remember, so here we use IEQ as our request object name. So I have used IEQ here as well, dot URL. And response, 
instead of response, we need res. I said res dot end. That means I'm gonna create a response and finish and send it. Hello world. Hopefully this will work. And then we close our. And then we created a server. HTTP dot create server. Okay. The function now we call it request handler. So that's why I put RH here. And finally, you're going to run the server. A server dot listen. Okay. And the three, I mentioned the 3000 is port number. It doesn't have to be 3000, it can be other ones. And usually you just don't want to avoid the commonly used ones. For example, for example, AT is for usually for HTTP request already. Okay, I'm gonna save. Okay, so what will happen now is you need to start this JavaScript code, which will then run as a server, listen to request. Uh, let me exit this. So to run this, uh, it's the same as before, you just type node and follow the bio file name. I think it's called my server. Yeah. And if you run. Okay, currently it's already running, but you couldn't see anything yet. And uh, then uh, if I go back to my web page, now if I type in uh, localhost 3000, sorry, it's a bit small. And it says localhost 3000, it will contact this server that's running. Um, and you can see now it's received a response, hello world. And you can see also here, it says incoming request from slash. And that means I didn't have any pass after the URL. And then the incoming request from favorite account of icon. That's a default thing by Chrome. We try to retrieve the icon for the web page. And I can, of course, I should add some paths after that. For example, I say localhost, comma, 3000 index.html. I want to re re receive a particular file and still get the same response. But here, the message displayed will be different. different. Say incoming request for slash index.html, that's actually the URL I typed in here. And again, the request for favorite call. Okay. Uh, so that's a very simple HTTP server that you can do with Node. Currently, it doesn't do anything particularly useful yet. Just send back a text message and console log something. Okay. And, but later on, we're going to do more complex things. It depends on what kind of request that the user sent. You would provide different responses, either provide data or maybe return the page or just return the error message. Um, yeah, uh, okay. And this is something we already briefly mentioned. When we created the request handler function, you have these two objects, one called the request and one called the response. So the request is what user send to you. And sometimes it's just shortened to request. And the re response is what you were sent back. And usually by when it first started, it will be empty and you add things to it. And sometimes it will be shortened, it's called RES. Okay, so in terms of the request, inside the request, and um, you will see the URL, but for example, also it actually tells you the type of browser visiting your page. For example, if you're calling from a mobile phone version of the browser, you can tell this from the user agent. Then you can decide, okay, I'm gonna just send back a mobile version of my page or app. Okay, uh, we already did this part as well. To run the server, you just type in node followed by a server name. And then if you're typing the URL in your browser, localhost 3000, the 3000 because you're typed in 3000 
on the listening line of code and you get a response. Okay, and you can type in different URLs, for example, 3000 or slash hollow slash world. And currently there's no difference in terms of the response you get. But on the node server side, um, it will display the URL people um, you typed in in the request. Okay, and that's it. Um, that's it for this module in terms of reading. So this will be the chapter one of this book called Practical Node.js. So there's a link there. This is a free book and you can read it online. If you click and you go to the GitHub repository for the book. And if you click this chapter one and you can see there's a chapter one.md file. And if you click, it opens the file in the markdown format, which essentially is the book itself. Yeah. And um, okay, that's all. Thank you and uh, see you all next week. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pat.